the NHL offseason continues to serve up interesting storylines that we have to keep an eye on from the fantasy side of things. So we're going to break it all down for you on Tuesday's episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. What is going on in Ottawa? The New York Islanders up to strange things once again. Detroit, one of the busiest squads in the NHL, and a little Colorado Avalanche news. Thank you for joining us. Let's get right to it. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody, and for all of those celebrating, happy 4th of July, north and south of the border to all of our American friends and followers out there. Thank you for tuning in for the Tuesday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. We are continuing our off-season news coverage from around the world of the NHL Steel. Yeah, this off-season, missing those big blue chippers, missing a lot of big names, but that doesn't mean that the fantasy realm isn't having its fair shakeup. And on today's episode, we'll break down Ottawa Senators news. What do you think, Steele? Is this the number one goalie they've been looking for? Jonas Koprasalo getting the bag in Ottawa. The New York Islanders throwing around a few very interesting contracts. Let's talk about that. And the Detroit Red Wings, I think, were the busiest squad of any. I believe they had 12 signings over the first three days. So we're talking about that and a little bit of this Colorado Avalanche news because they still hold a lot of key fantasy pieces that I'm sure our listeners have out there. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. I'm done talking now, Steele, because I want to hear what you have to say about the Ottawa Senators and this new duo of Corpusalo and Forsberg. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the goalie that they necessarily need, but uh, it's the goalie that they end up with. And I think it's the right move for them in the goalie market right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they, they have to address some other needs other than the goaltender. But for the Ottawa Senators and Pierre Dorian, it was a very straightforward plan heading into this offseason. It's figure out where you stand with Alex Debrinkit, whether you can sign him or facilitate a trade somehow and right. sign a start, sign a starting goaltender. Now, Corpusalo has been, you know, for the most part, on a very poor team with the Columbus Blue Jackets. I saw some spurts, some sparks uh, of, of talent and skill in the playoffs last season uh, with the Columbus Blue Jackets as well as with the LA Kings in the first round. You know, obviously going up against the Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, mm-hmm. and those type of guys, you're going to get scored yeah. on a lot. So the numbers fell off in, in that first round against the Edmonton Oilers. But so far, Pierre Dorian and the Ottawa Senators – have done exactly what they needed to do so far. They, you know, they made some smaller moves, but they get out, you know, they, they signed seven players to one year league minimum contracts. Again, those were just the smaller moves in a much bigger game. And then finally they signed Corpus Allo to a five year, $20 million uh, contract. It's a high risk, high reward uh, contract with Corpus Allo heading into next season. Uh, this was a goalie that wasn't even drafted last year in fantasy leagues. This was a guy that was picked up, here and there, you know, throughout right. the entire season. Can mm-hmm. he be that starting goaltender with the Ottawa Senators? Can he put up some good numbers? I want to know what the projections are for his numbers heading into the season because, like mm-hmm. I said, for the last number of years, he's been on a very poor Columbus Blue Jackets team. Five years, $20 million. Sorry, were you not done there? That's my bad. I'm jumping the gun on you. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, all good. Five years, $20 million for Corpus Allo. And the duo is what I wanted to quickly mention because apparently these two guys are boys. They have their time in the Columbus organization. I believe they both played together as a duo in Cleveland in the AHL. I think they won. I believe they won the championship that year that they played together in Cleveland. Anyway, is this the duo, though, that takes the Ottawa Senators over the top? Is it the one that really shines? I don't know, Steele. But there is obviously so much to like about this Ottawa group. And I think for now, Corpusalo has a really great opportunity. Am I saying go out there and make him your number one goalie draft choice? No, but he is going to get all the opportunity. And this is what I want to ask you about. I think he's going to get all the opportunity to take the number one lion's share of starts. I think to go into the season, I would be safe projecting a 60-40 split. 
That's what I would project. Of course, the better goalie is going to get the more starts. But I think Corpus Allo is a, a decent option for them and a guy that's just not seized his opportunity to really prove himself as a number one in his career. And let's see if he can do it with what will be a really good Ottawa team in front of him. I think so, too. I think, again, this is a goalie that wasn't drafted last season. This will be a draftable goaltender heading into the into next year with the Ottawa Senators. you got to think about this as well. Last season for the Ottawa Senators, they didn't have a full season of Jakob Trickering because they traded for him at the deadline. They didn't have a full season of Josh Norris as well in the top six forward group. So I think, again, the only two things they have to address this offseason was, one, a starting goaltender and facilitating yep. a trade with Alex Debrinkit. They still got $10.2 million in cap space. So mm, Jonas, Jonas Corposalo becomes a draftable goaltender, Agreed. but you don't want to take him way too early. Like you said, it's probably at the beginning of the year 60 40 maybe 65 35 mm -hmm. split between mm -hmm. forsberg and corpus Allo. but uh, you know from what i saw in the last uh you know the last 11 12 games of the regular season with the la kings and then in the playoffs i do like his game right now he's 29 years old so he's right in the middle of his prime mm -hmm. i think this is a good deal for the ottawa senators they don't Me overpay too. him it's giving him an opportunity to yep. see where he can take it Another good move from Pierre Dorian in a list of moves that we have been big fans of. You mentioned his solid start since getting acquired to LA. 7-3-1 with a 2.13 goals against and a 921 save percentage to round out the season in the regular season last year for the LA Kings. So I am just, here's my thing with Corpus Allo, and I know I say this a lot of, about a lot of these players that are changing cities and changing franchises. You made, I think, the most important point here. And as much as he did go to a really good LA Kings team down the stretch, he hasn't had a good chance to just be the guy with a good team in his entire career. And I know the Ottawa Senators are still having growing pains, but they're a good team. Yeah. And they're definitely, they were right there as on the playoffs last year. So I think with Corpus Allo in the mix there and his boy behind him, a confident setup that I think they're going to be fine with what they want to do in terms of whatever split it is. I know that's a small caveat steal, but you know, I like to buy into these angles, pal. So I'm going to buy into it and I want to definitely keep our eye on Corpus Allo. We're going to keep our eye on all the other topics we're going to get to. What is going on with the New York Islanders? That is way too many years for Mayfield. Way too many years. I know you like Engvall and I know we'll talk about this. Seven years seems silly. The cap hits are reasonable. We'll talk all about it. Detroit, Colorado, of course. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting on the MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right, just 20 bucks and you'll land $200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on everything, from the money line to the over-unders to who you think is going to hit that first dinger, and it's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly there's nothing better and no better place to bet on the mlb than fanduel america's number one sports book sign up today visit fanduel.com slash locked on and get up to 200 dollars in bonus bets that's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel official partner of major league baseball and thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Hit that subscribe, hit that follow button, mm -hmm. leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. And of course, leave us some yes. comments, DM us on Twitter if you need some help, some advice, just want to talk. Let mm -hmm. us know, and we will be right there as soon We're as possible. There. We are always there for you, fantasy hockey wise, or just anything wise. We mm -hmm. like to talk with our uh, with any of our listeners out there. And let's get over to the New York Islanders, though. A few other teams uh, that have made some signings over the last couple of days. New York Islanders. We will get to the Colorado Avalanche, Detroit Red Wings. Steve Eiserman always busy mm -hmm. as the general manager over there. But the New York Islanders signed four guys who were on the team last year. And I yeah. want to talk about the goaltenders first. Let's start with sure. Ilya Sorokin and Semyon Varlamov. Sorokin, yeah. eight years, $66 million. An absolute mm -hmm. fantastic deal for both parties. He becomes the third highest contract uh, amongst active goaltenders right now, right behind Sergei Bobrovsky and Andre Vasilevsky. I'm assuming Connor Hellebuck will pass Ilya Sorokin whenever he gets his next contract, but... 
Uh, I, I think it's a great deal for both the Islanders and Sororkin. Uh, he's been in the NHL now for three years and just incredible stats every single season, twice in the playoffs as well. Hasn't been able to get past the first round, but the stats in the playoffs have just been undeniably impressive and he deserves this contract uh, every single bit of it. I think he definitely deserves this contract. And Sor so you and I just butcher this guy's name. I say Sorokin. I say Sorokin. You know, I got to just get it right. But it's Sorokin, I think. But either way, you know how high I am on this guy. And I drafted him far too early in our draft last year. Yeah, okay. Was he up there with all the numbers as one of the best goalies in the mm -hmm. league for sure? And is he that? Most definitely. My my bit of concern with this deal is all the term on these contracts handed out by an 80-year-old general manager in Lou Lamorello. <laughs> Does the one that make the most sense is obviously Sorokin. But at the end of the day, it, what what is he under contract here till? He's 38 years old at a lot of money. They're just all risky. If it was just the goaltender, no problems. But the fact that he handed out so many deals to guys that, you know, aside from, you know, Mayfield and Varlamov, Varlamov, yeah, okay. They're just, you know what I'm saying, Steele? They're all just yeah. very weird moves aside from securing one of the best goaltenders in the league. It's just a lot of term again. So, yeah, it makes sense. And actually, I want your opinion on this. Four years for one of the best backups in the league, too. Sure, maybe four years sounds too much, but realistically the best thing you can say about this team is how solid they are in the goaltending area and on the back end that's really what what i'm looking yeah. at this as because otherwise i don't know what's going on in new york yeah well i i actually have a different take on this i i don't mind yeah. three out of the four contracts here i love the Elias sororkin contract the semyon okay. varlamov I, I i like the i like the length of the deal four years Maybe you could have got it down to 2.5 million, but at 2.75, mm -hmm. it's still uh, he's still a goaltender who has a solid track record. 15 years in the of league, course. he's a, a veteran backup who can play 30 to 35 games if you wanted to. I know he plays a, a little That's, bit less now, yeah. 23, 35. But if he, if you know, again, knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen. But if Sorokin gets hurt or he just has to play more games, Varlamov is capable of doing so. So. I like the contract. Yeah, he'll be 39 years old at the end of this contract. But uh, as a backup goaltender, I don't hate the move whatsoever. Pierre Angball at seven years, three million. I actually like a lot as well. I think he's really coming into a, I knew a decent like a decent depth player. Well, yeah, three million over seven years is not bad. Cap it makes million. sense. Cap it yeah, makes it, sense. It, it makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the the length of term for scott mayfield seven years again like three and a half million uh aav is is whatever but seven years he's 30 years old right now he'll be 37 at the end of this contract and this is a defenseman a player who just played his first full season ever in the entire mm -hmm. nhl and yeah he had stati statistically you know, the best season ever, 24 points in every single or in every single category you could think of. It was the best uh, right. season for him, but he's 30 years old. He's going to be 38 by the time this contract is over. He's not an offensive minded defenseman. Yeah, there's blocks, hits, uh, just over 100 shots. But other than that, it doesn't really bring anything. But you're okay with Mayfield being 38, but you're not okay with Var. You're, or you're okay with Varlamov being 38, but not okay with Mayfield. I see both sides. I guess all I'm saying at the end of the day is once again, which you and I have said countless times, this Islanders team seems to have some of the really nice pieces that you want for a team that can go on a cup run aside from those young offensive threats. And you would say, why didn't they address anything up front? Yeah, sure. There's still some pieces out there. I'm here for the takes on Varlamov. I'm here for the takes on Sororkin. I'm just overall concerned, Steele, about the quality of what this team is on the ice this year. And I'm talking about bets. I'm talking about maybe any Islanders fans getting overly hyped. Let's keep our eyes on the whole situation. But I'll say this about Engvall, a guy who topped out at 35 points in his career to me and is also, we're talking all about age, is already 27 and has only topped out at 35. Mm -hmm. Doesn't deserve seven-year contract of any magnitude. But at the end of the day, maybe his fantasy value goes up this year, Steele, because if he's getting paid and he's locked in and comfortable now, maybe you see his value go up a little bit. 
And, and this is the tough position that Lou Lamorello is putting the Islanders in is that, again, we've talked about the no trade clauses here. They have over 10 no trade clauses on their team. Uh, yeah. You know, Pierre Engvall being one of them now, Varlamov being one of them, uh, Scott Mayfield being one of them as well. And mm. again, I think for the Islanders and Lou Lamorello, they need to find a way to move Kyle Palmieri's contract, Cal Cl- Clutterbuck, Matt Martin, Ross Johnston, Casey mm. Zizekas. Those guys are at the end of their days for the New York a Islanders. They're up there in age. And again, pa- Palmieri is one of those guys who has a no trade clause in his contract. So it will Huge. be difficult for uh, Lamorello to find, you know, trading partners to take on these contracts, even if they can, because they got to submit their, you know, 10, 12, 16 team, no trade, t- no trade clause mm-hmm. team, whatever it is, but right. it, it's going to be difficult. And uh, he's put himself into some tough positions with a few of these contracts, but I, I like the Pierre Engvall one. The only one okay. that doesn't make any sense to me is Scott Mayfield. They've put a lot of pressure on Matt Barzal and Bo Horvat to carry this offense if this is what they're going to run back out there next year, Steel. They've also put a lot of pressure on their number one goaltender, who they've just paid handsomely. I just don't see it for this team. Be very wary of where you're taking some of these fantasy pieces, aside from maybe that goaltender we've just talked a lot about. Let's talk a lot about the Detroit Red Wings next, and we will get to the Colorado Avalanche. But I again, talking about goalies, seeing some of these moves that they made, Alex Lyon comes in. James Reimer comes in. They have 12 signings total steal. That's more than any team in the NHL. Yeah. That also included Justin Hall, Clem Costin, Daniel Sprung, JT Comfer was the big one. And the other big one, which I also want to talk to you about, is Shane Gosses Bear. So those were the two big ones for me, Comfer and Gosses Bear. I think those were the main things I want to talk about. But off the jump, when you let Nadelkovich go and you bring in guys like Reimer and Lyon, I think this is clear cut. Billy Huso's number one crease and his value, in my opinion, because he's going to eat a lion's share of time in Detroit. He's going to be a goalie that I'm keeping my eye on big time. You know, I like Billy Huso. Yeah. I, I love the fact that they bring in James Reimer, a veteran goaltender as well. And even on the teams that he's been on, he's provided some sort of uh, elevated fantasy value to his game. Uh, over the last number of seasons with the San Jose Sharks. So I like him as a backup goaltender, just a, just an overall great guy in the league. And again, I, this gives the confidence and, and a confidence booster to Billy Huso to be that number one guy now in Detroit. And That's again, they bring, they bring in some veteran players. JT Confer had an amazing season, 50 plus points, his best season yet. Yeah, he's 28 years old. Uh, a, a good contract as well. Daniel Sprong on a one-year, $2 million deal. We like mm-hmm. him for from the Seattle Krakens last season. So there's a few pieces that I really like Steve Eiserman bringing. Again, the one for me that doesn't make any sense, I would never in a million years pay Justin Hall <laughs> over $10 yeah. million dollars for three seasons. Just never happening. Shane Goss is fair, though. Mm. One year. What was it? One year, 4.2, 4.3. 4.2, 4.45, something like that. Something along those lines. I, I, I like that move as well to play along. Maybe, uh, you know, Marie Sider on the top line. I know they got mm-hmm. Jake Wallman up there, but yep. I think that elevates the power play a little bit. And then again, if somehow Steve Eiserman can facilitate a trade for Alex to bring it, the top six becomes significantly better in Detroit. I think two steel and hey. We throw out so many predictions that, yeah, some are going to be right. A lot are going to be wrong. Maybe some are in the middle. Detroit's on the come up heavy. We talked about the Chicago Blackhawks being a cornerstone franchise in this league. They're not bad for long. The Detroit Red Wings are close. I don't mean close to a cup threat. They're close to being a playoff team. They're there. Billy Huso needs to be that guy. I think you're going to see a lot better year from him, Steele. I'm going to put that out there now. And I think the moves that they've made today, none of them really jump off the page, do they? And the Justin Hall one for sure with you, I'm with you. It's a little bit of a head scratcher on how much they paid him and how much term he got. Yeah. Can he be better? I don't know, but the rest of the moves I don't hate and bringing in Sprung, bringing in Comfer, if they now bring in Debrinkat, 
They have Andrew Kopp, who needs to be better. They paid him as well. There's a lot of different wrinkles. I talked about wrinkles the other day for the LA Kings. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different wrinkles here for this Red Wings team, especially if, like you said, and it's a big if, but that they can bring in a guy like the Brinkat, because I really don't think they're done, Steel. And given how busy they've been, I think we're going to see a lot more from the Detroit Red Wings team, both on and off the ice. I think so as well. We know Steve Eisman likes to keep himself busy. And it, it, to me, it all just seems to be adding up between Detroit and, and Alex Dabrinka uh, ending up together at, at the start of the regular season. Detroit has the draft capital that the Ottawa Senators need. They don't have many draft picks over the next three seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got some veteran guys that could uh, be moved as well in a deal for Alex Dabrinka, like David Perron. Or, uh, or Andrew Kopp. I know they got a cop for the next four years. Anyway, I'm spitballing here. But Detroit okay. and Ottawa are pro most likely going to get a deal done for Alex to bring. It just seems like the most likely situation moving forward. It's hit a ton of snags. It seemed, you know, people, we know our boys from the Locked On Sens are saying, you know, it sounds like Detroit it's kind of fumbled this situation a little bit. There are snags on either end, it sounds like. But at the end of the day, if Detroit actually needs to add a piece with the value that is to bring it, they're going to have to pay the price. Um, so I don't know what that price really is, to be honest. And I think you and I are both high on to bring it. At the end of the day, I don't think Ottawa is mad if he stays. And I don't know if that's totally out the window. And maybe if they make another move up front, it is. Again, I'm spitballing. I'm throwing out ideas. I just think we'll see it happen, Steele, in the next few days. But these teams want these guys in the roster. They yeah. want it ahead of time. They want it done deal. This isn't the NBA. This isn't the NFL. It's not as much flash and drama. These guys want it done soon, and I think we'll see that soon. And I think very lastly, though, this means huge things more so for the Detroit Red Wings. The Ottawa Senators have that forward depth, right? If yeah. they do lose Debrinkit, I don't think they're that much as worried. Whereas if Detroit does miss out on Debrinkit, that's just obviously a much more a bigger loss for them. So let's also though let's talk about these Colorado Avalanche because some of these moves I need to ask you about. We will get to the Colorado Avalanche. A lot of signings, a lot of trades for them as well. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Please hit that hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button. We appreciate all the love and support you show us every single day, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning is when you can find all of our episodes. And Colorado Avalanche also a fairly busy team over the last few days. They made a they started things off with a trade. Uh, for Ryan Johansson from the Nashville Predators, and they retained 50% of his salary, so only $4 million cap hit for Johansson over the next two seasons. They go ahead and sign Miles Wood from the New Jersey Devils as well to a very nice contract, might I add, $2.5 million till mm. 2029, the next six, yeah, next six, five years for Miles Wood in Colorado. They yep. go out and acquire Jonathan Drewan the other day for eight hundred twenty-five thousand on a one-year term, and then they re-up Bowen Byram for two years, three point eight five million as well. Obviously, the salary cap plays into all of these moves, yes. especially ahead of what's expected to be. And I think this is one of those things you and I haven't mentioned yet, but that our listeners know over the next couple of years, the salary cap is expected to go up significantly in the NHL, which is why you're seeing guys like Tyler Bertuzzi, who was obviously a player who was sought after go in for a one year deal. That's why you're mm -hmm. seeing so many of these guys go in for short term deals for the most part. Yeah, we just talked about some crazy long term ones in New York, but those were, uh, you know, in the minority. So anyway, you're seeing some of these moves exactly from the Colorado Avalanche. And I think the main takeaway from me, Steele, which and we'll talk a little bit about Miles Woods fantasy value. I want to talk about Bowen Byram as well in a sec. Mm -hmm. I think the main takeaway for me is some of these moves had to be very strategic. And then you factor in what we also said when the names aren't just not out there this year. This is what you see now in the free agency frenzy. But they add Ross Colton. They move Newhook. They re-up Bowen Byram. They take some risks on Druen and Miles Wood. And what I want to just leave it at is I think this speaks to the confidence that this team has in their studly blue line. And when I look at the blue line in Colorado, Steel, I just honestly, 
and this might be a bold take because, you know, there's some other good units out there. I'm going to throw Taves, Makar, Byram, Manson, Johnson, and Gerard out there against any yep. other six in the league and feel very confident in that. I, I feel the exact same way. And I know when we talk about Devin Taves' fantasy value, I know it's a little bit different than what he brings to the actual team for the Colorado Avalanche. He's one of the best defensemen in the league. It's so hard to get him off the puck in the defensive zone. He's, He's very so important the to their success. I very agree. important, very intelligent with the puck. So there's a difference. Yeah. Sometimes there is a difference between the overall NHL level skill as a, and value in the NHL to fantasy value. And Devin Taves might be of one course. of those players that might be a little, a, a lot different uh, from time to time. But I, I like the move so far from the Colorado Avalanche. I think it is taking a shot on uh, Dr Jonathan Druan, but to get him for one year minimum, uh, you know, minimum deal as well, eight hundred twenty-five thousand. This is a guy who also has a connection to Nathan McKinnon. They played in Halifax for the Mooseheads together. Uh, you know, in their junior careers. So having him potentially on that top line with Miko Ranton and Nathan McKinnon, that could be another level to why they went out for Druan. Uh, you know, just looking at the, you know, lineups as well. Brian Johansson is a great second line center, something that they missed last season because he's really not a, a first line centerman anymore. Ross Colton bring, Ross Colton and Miles would bring a, a different physicality and a, a different style of game to the Colorado Avalanche. So I like the move so far from Joe Sackick in this Avalanche organization. First of all, just my bad if you're getting some spotty audio from me here because I'm up north and it just started raining cats and dogs back <laughs> here. And I'm right behind one of our secondary roofs and it's just really loud. So that's my bad. But again, Steele, I think it just speaks to how quality the main pillars of this team are because they've taken some risks here on some of these secondary pieces. And I actually like what you just mentioned. That third line now is a little bit of a nasty one. I also like up the middle. I don't hate that trio combination of McKinnon, Johansson, and Ross Colton. Couple of big ifs, couple of could they pay off? It could be huge. But at the end of the day, Colorado's fine because we just saw Gorgiev can compete. He was one of the better goalies for most of the year. We know McKinnon, Rantanen, they're two of the best offensive pieces, and we just talked about how good that blue line is. So they can afford to take some of these gambles, especially when we also just discussed those wrinkles with the salary cap. It all makes sense to me. Could it pan out huge? It might. Could it not work? That could also happen. Let's see how it all shakes out this year, pal. I'm already fired up. It's only <laughs> July the 4th. By the way, again, happy 4th of July to all of our American friends out there. Happy 4th of July. And I think that's something the Toronto Maple Leafs are also hoping pays out uh, dividends at the end of the year. They are also taking a chance. Max Domi, one year, $3 million. That's another linkage to a, a teammate who's on the team right there. Max Domi and Mitch yeah. Marner played for the London Knights in the OHL. So another linkage right there between those two guys taking a chance. And Max Domi following in his father's footsteps. There was playing a lot of that, Steele. Kyler Yamamoto as well yes. on the move. So many weird uh, minor moves that you, see, you know, players used to play together. Anyway, I'm going to stop because this rain's going crazy. <laughs> All good, man. No worries. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. Thank you so much again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.